Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, the Lord has been good to us, opening the heavens and giving us revelation on some basic fundamental truths. Every believer should know, right from the time we are born again, this is not something to be reserved for people who are doing one special program like the master class. No, the 16 glorious truths are truths concerning who we are in Yeshua and who is in us and what he purchased for us at the cross of Calvary that we all ought to know even as young believers it will help us to be strong and stable as we continue in the Lord and in the truth of his word and so we've done a number of them so far three of them so far we've done grace we've done election and we've done by the grace of the Lord that which the Lord released to us yesterday concerning what he has already accomplished for us at the cross and today we go on to the glorious truth number four justification and righteousness two sides of the same coin let's pray father in heaven thank you because you love us enough to have paid the huge price of the blood of yeshua with which you redeemed us Lord, we bless you. We ask you to just continue to feed us with the truth of who we are and what was purchased for us at the cross that we may grow in them and be strong and stable, used by you as ambassadors of your kingdom in the earth room. Thank you, Father. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. So we looked at grace so far as God stood number one, that everything about our life in the kingdom is all by grace. The strength of God, the ability of God, all at the expense of the blood of Yeshua. We become citizens of the kingdom by grace. We grow in it by grace. Everything by grace. Ministry by grace. Anything we don't do with grace, it becomes dead works. And then by the grace of Lord went on to the issue of election. That we are not, we didn't just happen, we are not happenstances before the foundation of the world, as Ephesians 1 4 says, Yeshua chose us in, you know, Elohim chose us in Yeshua. That is to say, He knew us, He chose us. And we're not talking about the twist into predestination where some people are ordained to make it, whether they like it or not, or whatever the way they live, or other people are ordained to destruction, whatever they do. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the biblical reality that none of us got saved because of our righteousness or our own will, that the Father's will was involved in our redemption. Number three gift, we looked at glorious truth. Number three was, you know, redemption redemption we saw the full scope yesterday was awesome seven full scope were redeemed from the hand of satan were de redeemed from the the, the 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 power of sin were redeemed from the world influence were redeemed different things that he spoke about yesterday we won't have time to repeat them all but redemption is real buy back the blood that yeshua shed he took our place we were then to die for our sins he took our place and redeemed us we are to live for him now, glorious truth number four, justification and righteousness, two sides of the same coin. What are they? Justification is the announcement from Elohim that seals the deal of our translation from sinner to saint. If we truly repent of our sins, we're convicted, we repent, we ask God for mercy. You know what? Not only are we forgiven, we know that from religion. But what religion doesn't teach us is that we are justified. Meaning, the blotting out is real. There's no record of anything we ever did that we brought to the Lord the day we were saved. There's absolutely no record. It's purged, it's cleansed, it's purified. Justification says, didn't matter what you ever did, you are counted now as one who never committed any sin in the first place. This is such a glorious truth. This is a pronouncement of not guilty for the one who is truly really repentant. Brothers and sisters, you know, there are scriptures that bring out this glorious thing that the Lord will, will do. In Isaiah 53, 3 to 6, he talked about what Yeshua went through for us. And as the father looked away from his beloved son hanging on the tree, was in great anguish because of our sins he bore. 
you know, shouted, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? He forsook him, he forsook him because of our sins. See, that's why it's so important to understand that justification says you are blameless. Not just you are forgiven, there's blotting out. You are blameless. You can stand before the Lord as one that never did anything. And you see, redemption is not complete until you understand justification. Romans 4, 24, 25 says, But for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on him that raised up Yeshua from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses. He went to the cross for our offenses and was raised again. His resurrection was for our justification so that we can live in the newness of life. So we need to repeat this truth on and on until it sinks in. We are justified by faith, as we are told in Romans 5 from verse 1, being justified by faith, we have peace with Elohim through our Lord Yeshua, by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of Elohim. Go, go through it all, you discover that it's such a powerful thing. And the Lord said in the book of Romans 5, verse 15, but not as the offense, also as a free gift. For if through the offense of one, many be dead, much more by the grace of Elohim and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Yeshua, had abounded unto many. And so the Lord is saying, look, through Adam, sin came upon the world. Through Yeshua, justification that purges, that purifies, that we can be the new creation of Elohim in truth and in spirit. We're going to look at that, you know. So justification boldly proclaims that Elohim does not keep any record of sins that are forgiven. And this is something that we need to know and it should be branded in our heart. That which you repented of concerning your former life is blotted out. It doesn't exist except in the mind of Satan. And in the mind of religious people who keep trying to, you know, bring it forth. It's like, you know, you know the, the equipments that are called dredgers. Dredging equipment, they go into the ocean. They go into the lake. They go into the sea. And they let down their who can begin to dredge out things at the bottom. That's what Satan does. Satan wants to go and dredge out your past, use it to torment you, use it to taunt you, use it to wound your conscience, use it to make you unable to stand before the Lord. And that's what brings sin consciousness. But the Lord says, hey, receive it that the blood didn't just bring about forgiveness, it brought about blotting of your sin. It doesn't exist. As I said before, it's only in the mind of Satan that that thing exists because he's the accuser of the brethren. So he goes as a dredger to dredge out the past to try to see who he can confuse, who he can torment, who he can taunt, so that your conscience being wounded, you get sin conscious. Remember, as a man ticket in his heart, so is he. So if you think you're a sinner, you agree with Satan that you're a sinner, so it becomes, he goes to execute it, and then it begins to bring a situation where you are ever learning, never able to come to knowledge of truth, you ever struggle, you try to move, you move from spirit to flesh to try to please the Lord through works, through performance, because you are thinking you are not good enough. It happens to people who have often mental they try to prove something to the Lord when the Lord says, look, I've received you, I forgave you, I purged your sin, I blotted it out, I've accepted you on the merit of what Yeshua did. Brothers and sisters, we need to know that this is so important. In the Old Testament, Micah 7, 18 to 19 captures the essence of justification when it says, who is a God like unto thee? that pardoned iniquity and passed by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. He retained not his sins forever because he delighted in mercy. He will turn again. He will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities and thou will cast all their sins into the depth of the sea. Whatever it is you did before you met the Lord is cast into the depth of the sea. It doesn't exist. 
if it exists in your mind, it means Satan has done a great work. Satan has penetrated your defenses and has done a terrible work to distort your identity. You need to reclaim your identity today by repenting of giving him scope to accuse the Lord that his word is not true. Accuse the Lord that his blood is not powerful. Accuse the Lord that he didn't truly do what he said he would do with you. And so it is as serious as that, brothers and sisters, it is important to know. Then what is righteousness? Righteousness, the other side of the coin, is the spiritual outcome of justification. What do we mean? You see, justification implies that the sin confessed and repented of is blotted out and no longer exists in any shape or form. Then what is righteousness? Righteousness is the nature of Elohim which is now released as a gift to cover you. It becomes your new identity. Righteousness means Elohim accepts you on the merit of what Yeshua did. That gift of righteousness is something the Lord wants us to receive because it will give us righteousness consciousness if we receive it. Then you can exercise faith in the world. Then you can go before the Lord on the merits of what has been accomplished and you are not bogged down by former feeling of filthiness and all that because they no longer exist. And when you are clothed with his righteousness, you can relate with the father as a father and a son. You can relate with him as a member of his family because he looks at you through the eye of what Yeshua accomplished for you at the cross of Calvary and accepts you as such. Men and brethren, so justification is simply right standing before Yahweh without any sense of condemnation because the past sins are past, completely wiped away wiped clean by the blood of Yeshua, justification has taken care of them. You are now standing in that newness of life which the Lord gave to you. And brothers and sisters, this is so important because a lot of believers are giving room for Satan, the accuser of the brethren, to keep tormenting them with their past. And the Lord says, hey, your salvation was real. Justification guarantee the blotting out of the past and righteousness guarantees standing in the present of your identity in him who he is in you. This is what gives you the grace to believe. This is what gives you grace to come to the throne of grace. This is what gives you grace to walk boldly. The righteous is as bold as a lion. You are not scared of anything. You are not scared of death. Scare, fear of death is taken out of you. And you can be who the Lord wants you to be. A man and brethren is so important that we receive it, that we receive this dual truth. And I want to encourage you, go to the teaching notes, study it. Take time. Take time and study it so that you can be in that place the Lord wants you to be. You know, Romans 5, 1, 2 says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with Elohim through our Lord Yeshua by whom we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of Elohim. Men and brethren, it's so important that we grasp the truth of righteousness in the book of Romans extensively. It's right there. You know the story of Martin Luther. You know, he used to be a free Catholic a priest. He would wear black and, you know, black habit and you know, be walking barefooted, trying to see a way to please God and be righteous. It couldn't happen. And the more he tried, the more he felt filthy, the more he felt condemnation, the more he felt inadequate. One day, it struck him, Romans 1.17, and the truth in Ephesians 2, that the just shall live by faith. It's not by struggle. It's not by works. That epiphany changed his life. And the Lord is saying, you can't say you are born again and you are living as if you are just a makeover, a little patchwork. The Lord said, no, you are not a patchwork, a new creation. And this new creation, you are understanding the spiritual mechanics here because your past was past. Totally. I don't care what it is. Murder. Halotry. Name anything you can name, any sin you can name. That day you met Yeshua, he not only forgave you, he blotted it out. And he clothed you with the righteousness that comes from the Father. You stand before the Father 
on the merit of what Yeshua, who Yeshua is, or what he did. And the Lord said, receive this. This is, this is the heart of salvation. When say people are saved, we need to know what they are saved from and what they are saved into. And the Lord is saying, if we understand this, then we understand how weak the law was because the law could not justify anybody. The law could not confer righteousness on anybody because you try today, you get this good. The next moment, you didn't get it good, you go down. And so the law says, if you truly, genuinely repented of your sin, the Lord has done this for you. In Romans 1, 16, 17, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Yeshua, for it is the power of Elohim unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and to the Greek. Verse 17, What struck Martin Luther? For therein is the righteousness of Elohim revealed, but from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. All these transactions are by faith. You didn't you were not alive when Yeshua came on earth 2,000 years ago, but you believe that he died for you. The blood he shed at the cross, you didn't see it, but you believe. You are not like Thomas. Thomas said, except I see, except my hand touch. Yeshua said to him, Thomas, you now believe? Blessed are they who do not see, but they believe. So what we didn't see, but we believe in the heart. We confess with our tongue. We are saved. We are justified. A past is blotted out, and we are clothed with the righteousness of Elohim in Yeshua, and we are made accepted in the beloved. Amen and brethren, the, the Second Corinthians 5, 7, 5 21, often ignored when talking about Second Corinthians 5 17. Don't stop at 17, read all the way to 21. He says, For he has made him to be seen for us. That's Yeshua. Elohim made Yeshua to be seen for us. Who knew no sin? It didn't stop there. That we might be made the righteousness of Elohim in him. is an exchange at the cross. At the cross, all our sins were thrown upon him. At that same cross, the righteousness of Father in him is released to us who believe. And so, brothers and sisters, let's grab these truths. Let's hold on to them. And when we hold on to them, it will help us. This transition is fundamental and real. You cannot go find the kingdom if you do not receive and walk in the gift of justification which produces righteousness or right standing with Yahweh. Take note of these truths. 1. Justification is a fruit of grace by faith in the finished work of Calvary. Ephesians 2 8. Faith in what he did. 2. Justification and righteousness cannot be obtained by religious works or observances. Ephesians 2 9. 3. It has nothing to do with the church in quotes you worship at or the group you belong to. Nothing to do. Even a network like International Missus Fellowship, not everybody is on the same page. Some believe certain dimensions of the kingdom, some have not yet come to that knowledge. So, where you belong to is not a group thing. Four, it is therefore necessarily to personally, by faith, appropriate the gift of justification and righteousness we are we and allow ourselves to relate with him, Satan, and fellow human beings with that mindset of justification and righteousness. So, if we understand that, five, it is this reality, or rather, if this reality is not accepted and lived out, the saint will begin to think and behave like a sinner and as you know, we said before, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. If you believe you're a sinner who is trying to get, uh, trying to get um, uh, the favor of God, yeah, but you believe you're a sinner, you are made of non effect all that Yeshua came to do. So it's so important that we know death and life are in the power of the tongue, as we're told in Proverbs 23 7 and Proverbs 18 21. Because it's the power of the tongue, speak often to yourself that you are the righteousness of Elohim in Yeshua HaMashiach. That's who you are. You are justified. It's no past. When Satan tries to speak to you and try to accuse you of your past, remind him of his future in eternal torment, as the book of. Uh, um, Revelation 20 shows also remind him that at the blood at the cross the blood took it out he cannot torment you with the reality and when you tell him the truth he has no option than to receive it let's also take note justification is not a one-off blessing 
that happened only when you were born again, the day you were born again. Brothers and sisters, even in normal day-to-day -day life, any time, you see, the default position of our lives is sinlessness, to live a life above sin. But any time you stumble, any way, thought, word, deed, or accidental, whatever, you know what? Run to Elohim. If you fall, fall into his hand. Don't run away like Adam from his presence. Run to him, and by the grace of the Lord, confess your sins to him, repent of it, ask him for mercy, and receive justification and his clothing of righteousness. In other words, it should be something you understand and walk in. And also, the Lord wants us to extend this to the sin to one another. This is at the harder part. You, are, you receive it for yourself. Can you extend it to some other person that when people may stumble and sin against us, speak against us, do anything against us, can you forgive? We are supposed to forgive like the Father forgave. We are supposed to justify, count what they did as blotted out. So it's not a profitable thing, whether domestically, husband, wife, parents, children, children, parents, or brothers and sisters in local assembly to remind each other what they did against each other 20 years ago, 15 years ago, 10 years ago. That is doing the work of Satan. It is being recruited into the ministry of accusation of Satan. No, we shouldn't give room. See each other in the light of what the blood has done. And no matter what anybody did to you, it says, I'm sorry. Don't go reading meaning into his, I'm sorry, whether he's really real or not. You know what? Receive it act like your father blot it out in your consciousness and let them be clothed with the righteousness of the father in your consciousness and we need to say this before we leave justification and righteousness do not validate the doctrine of eternal security we are saying live anyhow grace has covered you no the scriptures are very clear Nobody who is in the Lord can go into sin and use grace and use justification and righteousness as a, 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 an excuse. Romans 6, 1 to 7 makes the case. We shall not continue sin that grace may abound. Hebrews 4, Hebrews 6, 4 to 8 make the case that those who are in the Lord, if they sin willfully, they get into problem and they will be difficult to renew them again into the faith. So also Hebrews 10, 26 to 31. So let's live a life of justification in our consciousness, knowing that it's blotted out, let's live a life of accepting the righteousness of the Father that we have in Him because of what Yeshua did. Let's walk into these truths. Let's walk in them. Let's hold on to them. And let's shut down every voice that says nay. Every negative voice, let's shut them down. By way of assignment or before then, I want to say this to you, men and brethren. Share this video with friends and family. Encourage people. Study it a number of times. Let it sink in. Take the teaching note, which is more detailed. Study them line by line. It's, you're going to do yourself a lot of good. So by way of assignment, number one, please explain the glorious truth of justification. What is it? Two, explain what righteousness means and how it is connected to justification. Three, what aspect of this teaching resonated most in your heart as an urgent truth to teach sins? Then four, why, why is eternal security a dangerous concept? What is this five? What is the simple key to the just life of righteousness at all times? Simple key. You know what, brothers and sisters? The Lord loves us. So tomorrow we continue by the grace of the Lord and, you know, uh, if we're not here tomorrow, we'll still be able to give the lesson sometime later in the day. Whichever one, just be in mind that this lesson, each of these lessons are very vital for us to know who we are in the Lord and who He is in us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your goodness, for your mercy, for loving kindness. We ask you to just allow this truth to sink in. Let it marinate in our minds until we receive them and they power our lives that the enemy's voice is shut down and the voice of religious people are shut down and we believe your report, walk by your report of 
righteousness consciousness and a consciousness that our past is past have your way O lord in yeshua jesus name amen and amen